All right, so repent means turn, all right? The second week, we talked about pray. We need to connect with God, all right? Praying just means connecting with God. We talk with Him, we connect. Then we talked about give. Pastor Chris talked about giving, which all that means is just being generous. We need to be generous with the things that God has given us. Last week, we talked about baptism and how baptism is identifying with, cross, with Christ. We, we are buried, we're, we're bar- we die, we bury, and we're raised again when we're baptized, okay? And that's just a moment where we identify with what Jesus has done. So those are all commands that Jesus has given us. Today, we're going to be talking about making disciples. We want to make disciples And we want to be disciples. So let's talk for just a minute about what it means to be a disciple. All right? So if you want, grab out your your Bible, whether that's on your phone or it's actual physical Bible. I don't know what you do with one of those. And we're going to talk about what it means to be a disciple. All right? All right, in Luke 4... Um, excuse me, Luke 5, chap- chapter 5, verse 4, is a story of Peter being called as a disciple. All right? I'm going to read that to you. And when fi- he had finished speaking, this is Jesus, he said to Simon, Now go where it is deeper and let, your nets to catch, let out your nets to catch some fish. So what Jesus had been doing is he had been sitting in Peter's boat and he had been teaching from Peter's boat. And he said, let's take out your boat a little bit further and we'll let out your nets. And, and Simon said, Master, we've worked hard all last night and we didn't catch a thing. But if you say go, I'll let the nets, if you say it so, I will let the nets down again. And at this time, their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. Now, kids, what I want you to do is, you may not realize it, but this is a fish. So if you would take, there's a little slit on each side, you just take this and right here, put it together, and now you have a fish. All right? So what I want you to do is, not only is it a fish, but I want you to stand up right where you're at. Now, you have to be kind of good, all right? You have to kind of flip your wrist all right, you have to flip it backwards like that. And oh, look how it spins, all right? So imagine the fish in the net and it's so full of fish. Go ahead and try it right where you're at. It's okay. Your parents aren't going to get mad because I said it's okay, all right? So you can do that and it's just gleaming with fish, all right? So put it back up, please. So it's gleaming with fish, and there's Peter, and they are freaking out because there's so much fish. And so he shouts to help for help, and he brought his uh, partners to the boat. And soon both boats were filled with fish on the verge of sinking. And when Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before the Lord and said, Oh, Lord, please leave me. I'm too much of a sinner to be around you. For he was awestruck by the number of fish that he had caught. And as the others were with him, his brothers, his partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. And Jesus replied to Simon, and this is it right here, okay? This is what a disciple is, all right? Jesus replied to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. And he followed him. As soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. If we want to be disciples, that means we follow Jesus. We leave everything that we have and we follow Jesus. You are called to follow Jesus. You may not believe it. You may wonder if that's really true, but you are called to follow Jesus. Jesus. You're called to be a disciple. You're not commanded. You're called. You're called to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus. Discipleship means follow. Now, if you are following Jesus, you are given a command. And the last thing that Jesus spoke to his disciples comes in Matthew 28. 
He's been crucified, he's been buried, he's been raised again, he's already appeared to his disciples, and then he says this in Matthew 28. The last thing he says before he's lifted into heaven, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given authority in heaven, all authority in heaven and on earth, therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right? So you make disciples and you baptize. Now, real quickly, we don't want to have a long time. We know we got your kids in here and they're wiggly. So I just want to talk for just one minute about how do we practically go about making disciples. Because that can be a scary thing. It can be scary. Okay, I'm supposed to make followers of Jesus. I, I don't know what that means. How do I do that? And there's this really cool story about, now it's really interesting how the, the, the Gospels go about talking about Jesus calling his disciples, because they're all a little bit different. But there's a story in John about how Andrew, the brother of Peter, is called. Now, Andrew originally was a disciple, a follower of John the Baptist, Jesus comes to John, John the Baptist, to be baptized. He's baptized, and John says all this crazy stuff about Jesus being the Messiah. And that perks up Andrew's ears, and he's like, okay, who's this guy? So he wants to go check him out. And so in John chapter 1, he goes to Jesus, and he says, Master, where do you live? And Jesus says something really interesting. And if we want to make disciples, if we want to make followers of Jesus, it's not complicated. It's just this. Jesus said, come and see. Come and see. We make discipleship really complicated. It's getting someone with you who doesn't maybe know Jesus. Come and see. Come and see. See if what I'm living and what I'm experiencing is something that you want to live and you want to experience. You don't have to be a Bible scholar. You don't have to know everything about the Old Testament and the New Testament. You don't have to have been a Christian for years and years and years. This is what I know. Come and see. You know what Andrew did? He went and he saw. And then you know what he did? He's like, this dude's cool. Peter, Peter, come and see. And Peter comes and he sees. And then later on, Jesus gets in Peter's boat and Peter's mind is blown. But it all started with, come and see. There are people in your life who aren't followers of Jesus. They're not disciples. And you're meeting them every day at work, at school, for your baseball team, your soccer team, your dance, whatever you do. You're meeting people every day. Those are people that are called to be disciples. And you are commanded to disciple them. But don't get it twisted. It's easy. Come and see. Can you guys do that? Can you make that simple statement to somebody in your life? Come and see. Come and see this Jesus that I'm talking about. Can I pray with you so that we can invite people to come and see? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Jesus, I thank you that you have called me. I thank you that you've called my friends. You have called us to you, to be followers of you. Someone sometime in our life said, come and see. Jesus, I pray that we who are followers of you would follow that command to go to others in our lives and invite them to come and see who you are and show them the Jesus that we have, the Jesus that we know.